lots of things, all waking up. Become a part of the global phenomenon we call the Internet of Everything. Trees will talk to networks, will talk to scientists about climate change. Cars will talk to road sensors, will talk to stoplights about traffic efficiency. The ambulance will talk to patient records, will talk to doctors about saving lives. It's going to be amazing and exciting, and maybe, most remarkably, not that far away. The next big thing, we're going to wake the world up and watch with eyes wide as it gets to work. Cisco, tomorrow starts here. Good afternoon and welcome. Today we'll be discussing OpenStack with Cisco Compute, Storage, and Networking. So um, we'll be talking a lot about the Cisco Unified Computing System, or UCS product line for compute and storage. We'll be discussing Cisco Nexus, the data center switching and software product line. I'm Dwayne DeCaput, product manager for OpenStack at Cisco. I'm joined with Ashok Rajagopalan, who's the UCS marketing manager for cloud and virtualization. So OpenStack is very important to Cisco, and OpenStack is a key part of Cisco's DNA. We've been involved with OpenStack since the formation of the foundation. Our vice president and CTO, Lou Tucker, is vice chair of the foundation. We've also been contributing code and blueprints since Diablo. So who here has been involved with OpenStack since Diablo? So that was a long time ago. They're excellent. Um, we've innovated on things such as Nova scheduling, uh, quantum neutron networking plugins, high availability, as well as dashboards and other um, scheduling functionality. We've also innovated in areas like automation and orchestration, a lot of puppetry, a lot of which has been submitted upstream in the community edition, um, some of which is in the Cisco OpenStack installer. We've also have plugins and um, integration with our key product lines, UCS for Nova, um, innovations on storage, Cinder, Swift, Ceph, networking both hardware and software for our Nexus plugins, also the CS, um, CSR 1000V, the Cloud Services Router 1000V. We've also done a lot of work with the community on uh, layer four through seven services, firewall as a service, VPN as a service, load balancing as a service. We've also done a lot of work with customers and real world use cases. Um, who here was at the summit in Portland six months ago? I know those guys were right there. Um, so on stage, we had Comcast, you know, one of their key services, Xfinity, Cloud DVR, on OpenStack, on Cisco UCS. This summit, we're talking about PhotoBucket. So large um, online photo sharing service, three billion customers, um, online with, on UCS with Nexus plugins, and we're driving innovation through these real-world use cases, working with customers. A lot of the things we've learned from other architectures like VMDC, Virtual Multi-Tenant Data Center, we're bringing those lessons learned and best practices into OpenStack. One of the benefits of OpenStack is it's a great abstraction for software-defined networking. Customers like the fact that they can deploy their applications on OpenStack, and then they can plug in multiple networking stacks underneath it, and the networking complexity is essentially abstracted. You can have a hardware-based networking plug-in through the Nexus product line, software-based with the Nexus 1000V. You can have multiple SDN plugins. Um, Open Daylight plugin for an OpenFlow-based solution. We also have technology around 1PK API. So this is a standard API, which as it's adopted by Cisco product lines, and as 1PK API functionality is added to a Neutron plugin, you can have additional um, scalability and product options. So customers, we mentioned Comcast last year. Their key service, Xfinity, on OpenStack on UCS. Um, Photo Bucket this year, a press release and blog is out this week. So photo bucket, three billion photos, 100 million users, and they're heavily using OpenStack on Cisco UCS with the Nexus plugins. And then the previous sum, um, summit, the Folsom, 
uh, who here was at the uh, Folsom Summit. So there we had WebEx talking a lot about how they use um, their software as a service on OpenStack on UCS. So now we'll turn it over to Ashok for a deep dive on compute and storage with UCS. All right, thank you, Dwayne. Um, so about four years or so back, Cisco uh, launched their first x86 server business. And uh, you know, prior to that, our pedigree was primarily in uh, networking. Um, so how many of you are familiar with uh, UCS and Cisco Compute? So, OK, quite a few of you. That's good. Um, so one of the paradigms we, we did when we launched UCS was just as this whole concept of application-defined XYZ was, was becoming popular, we built this construct for compute. Uh, we abstracted all the state information out of a compute platform and built a controller, so to speak, which would manage a large scale-out environment. And you know, fast forward three, four years, and that's become the de facto standard in the marketplace where everybody's abstracting um, state information out of either a switch or a server or a storage, and it's become application-defined something, right? It's storage or networking or compute. So uh, this is kind of the precursor to application-defined computing, so to speak. And that's, that's kind of our uh, kind of entry into the server market. And this is um, you know, just for, for those of us who are fam you know, want to get familiar with the business, we are uh, number two in the, ra in the Blade server business today. Uh, we are one of the leading server vendors in the market. In four years, uh, uh, you know, we have $2 billion plus business. We have a number of uh, Fortune 1,500 customers and the like. And um, you know, our, our scale has definitely expanded. Uh, we lead a number of benchmarks uh, in the marketplace, uh, both virtualized and bare metal benchmarks. So we are definitely one of the leading players in this market. But I think our key differentiation is that, like I said, we're not just another server vendor, but we actually built a computing platform which abstracts state information from the server. So we have a management paradigm uh, which talks about, which talks, talks to all these compute nodes. These are the various compute portfolios we have. So we you know various rack servers and blade server compute portfolio. Uh, but what what is the key premise is this portfolio? We don't have you don't have to go to touch any of these servers. There is a controller which talks to each of these server nodes, and uh, it's it, it's it made it's made it very easy for us to work with Nova. Very easy to make it to work with Puppet scripts and the like to kind of provision this environment. I'll talk about some of uh, the tools we have built to deploy a large scale cluster, whether it's you know, a few hundred nodes or a few thousand nodes in really minutes. Uh, the, like I said, the fundamental paradigm we have is this notion of uh, a management plane, uh, which is actually embedded on the top of the rack switch and which manages uh, you know, tens of hundreds of uh, server nodes. The key uh, point is that um, all the state information, we abstract all the information as an infrastructure template. It's called a service profile. And the idea is the service profile, you can define what you want out of the server. I want you know, XYZ compute power, XYZ memory. I want a uh, number of networking ports. I want uh, this kind of QoS on my networking ports and the like. And you slap that configuration down to the server nodes. Uh, these server nodes assume that, uh, should I say, personality. And uh, you bring up you know, your Red Hat operating system or CentOS or whatever it is that you want to bring up. Uh, you bring up on this uh, environment. So it's extremely scalable, uh, stateless uh, compute environment, which is, which is you know, uh, very, very nice architecture for s service providers and large scale cloud offerings. Um, like I, I was talking about the service profile. So what happens is the service profile, you kind of define everything. You don't have to go figure out what is your IP address or WW port names or MAC addresses or you know, XYZ for, uh, specifically for each of the servers. All you do is define the block of what is required for a large scale cluster and we automatically will pick up all the, state, you know, all the uh, addressing information from this block. We'll automatically define state information. If you want to replicate the state information across multiple nodes, it's a simple click. There's something called a template you create for a node. Let's say in an in a, in a, in a OpenStack environment, you have a specific compute node definition you can replicate that compute node definition across multiple nodes and deploy them in a very rapid fashion. If you have a storage node definition, you can again co you know, co copy that definition across multiple nodes and deploy it in a very seamless fashion. And we've kind of automated all of this for uh, OpenStack deployment. I'll, I'll show you some of the scripts a bit later. Um, the other piece is uh, uh, what we talk about scale. So in, uh, when we're talking about cloud, 
the, the typical notion is you talk about tens of hundreds of nodes. So we have something called UCS manager, like I said, which is embedded on the top of the rack switch, which, you know, which manages about 160 nodes. That's a kind of a domain, so to speak, of a cluster. And then we have another piece of software, which is called UCS Central, which is a VM, which can reside anywhere uh, you know, in, inside the cluster, outside the cluster, which can manage up to 10,000 nodes. So again, a very simple common pane of uh, glass to manage a very large cluster environment. Um, you, can, you, know, you can have various kind of connectivity models, whether it's L2, L3. Uh, the key advantage of this is, is it can manage domains across multiple data centers. Physically, you know, they could be located within the same four walls, or they could be spread geographically. As long as there's IP connectivity, you can have a common view of all of this environment. So a very powerful environment, especially for uh, large customers and service providers where they need to have a simplified view. They need to have one IT admin kind of provisioning all of this environment. It's a very, very powerful story. Um, so for OpenStack, what we've done is uh, we have made it uh, easy for consumption. So we have uh, typically uh, seen a couple of uh, you know, use cases where it's, it's a compute intensive workloads or mixed use workloads or, or storage intensive workloads. We have got these definitions defined uh, you know, the service profile templates and the like based on what kind of use cases you've seen your customers do. And uh, we have got these, what we call as bundles, as accelerator packs, which is predefined configuration. So a customer can def you know, deploy their half rack configuration or a full rack configuration as needed. Uh, and, and it's a very, you know, start to get somebody off the ground in a very fast fashion. This is a kind of ideal approach. Uh, we also have automation scripts which will kind of deploy all of this in a very rapid fashion. That's another key advantage we have. Uh, I think I have, um, so this just talks about in, in our high density configuration, what is our starter uh, configuration and two control nodes, two compute nodes and storage nodes. Again, uh, depends on what, what the specific customer requirements are, but this is just to get these services started on specific nodes, to get somebody started, uh, to get a, get a customer off to deploying OpenStack in a very fast fashion and uh, running some of these services and getting started, right? That's the primary goal of these accelerator packs. So let me kind of skip through all these and spend some time on the automation. So what, uh, what we have done from automation is, uh, one of the key requirements we heard from customers is uh, they have, they want to deploy a you know, few hundred nodes or a few tens of nodes. And typically, the configuration required and the services required for each of these nodes is slightly different because you might want to run a few controllers, three controllers, and, and a handful of compute nodes and a handful of storage nodes. And you might need some Ceph nodes and some Swift nodes and the like. So uh, what we have done is you can create a template of what your requirements are. You could say that a two-socket server with 128 gig memory with two spindles is going to be my compute node. Uh, a two-socket server with 24 spindles and, you know, 256 gig memory is going to be my storage node, my Ceph node, and maybe another version is going to be my Swift and Gateway. So you can define those up front, and um, that's the only touch you have to do. Um, we, we have a Python SDK environment where you, you, know, you can either script it or we're building GUI if you want to go and uh, you know, touch it uh, through GUI. But, but the idea is we have a scripting process, and uh, there are a few credentials you have to give because you're going to talk to the UCS manager, so you give the uh, login credentials and the like, and after that, the, the whole process gets completely automated. We would uh, go provision the servers. Uh, would, first step is the UCS manager would discover all the servers based on what gets connected to the top of the rack switch. will automatically discover all the servers, so it, you, would, the UCS manager will figure out, I have you know, five two-socket servers with XYZ configuration connected, uh, based on that, I will slap in the appropriate service profile because these are my storage nodes, and these are my compute nodes and the like. Uh, based on that, uh, we, we use a, a combination of uh, Puppet and Cobbler uh, to get this whole process done. So we reduce the nodes to the Cobbler database, uh, and then based on that, we, would, uh, we have an event listener which will listen to all the nodes. If there are new nodes getting added, it could be also dynamic at any time of the process. We would do the Puppet apply add the systems into the OpenStack environment, uh, and then we would uh, 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 Pixie boot, depending on what operating system you want to do, it's Red Hat or CentOS or whatever it is. Uh, in, you know, this is an example we took for Red Hat operating system installation. We'll sync all the plugins. If there is uh, any additional uh, features or scripts you want to add in, that's another capability that we can add in as well. So this is a very scalable framework. If your customer has 
uh, additional capabilities and, and the like that they want to turn on, that's something they can explore as well. And finally, what you see is everything is registered, uh, then we hand it over to OpenStack. So there's inventory of all the nodes into the controller, uh, you know, then you're, it's, up, it's ready for VM provisioning. You can go to your Horizon dashboard and you can go provision whatever you want. So the basic idea is uh, uh, we, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a framework we've put together. Uh, it's extensible. Um, this is kind of a starter kit, so to speak. They obviously, customers want some customization. They want to add additional uh, capabilities and the like, and that's definitely possible with this framework. And uh, in Cisco, we have something called CDN, which is a, our developer network. We've posted all these scripts to our developer network, so you know, feel free to take, take advantage of it, leverage it, uh, and extend it if you, if you feel, see fit. Uh, but what we do want to show is the power of uh, the automation framework we have with UCS Manager. Uh, since we have the complete inventory of all the hardware, we can tweak a lot of that stuff. And I think Dwayne pointed out earlier about the scheduler. So there's a lot of uh, innovation that we're adding on top of our environment for OpenStack is building the relevance of uh, workload placements to the specific hardware layout that we have because we have the complete visibility of network and compute platform. So we can definitely add that piece of innovation. So this is just basically talking about uh, Nova. So I'll not spend too much time into this, but one of the key pieces we have seen is the way it is structured today, it, 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 everything, the, 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 the most uh, common denominator of an atomic unit here is about a virtual machine. And there is a lot of customers who want both bare metal as well as virtual machine environments. So what we are trying to uh, add to the scheduling policy as well as add to our capabilities is how can we provision a bare metal as well? Because that's a, that's a requirement in the marketplace, especially for Hadoop workloads and the like where they still want bare metal services. So one of the pieces uh, we are uh, looking at is how would we um, you know, expand the existing framework? This is, and I've abstracted the existing framework, and definitely it's a lot more complex than this. But the uh, idea is how can we add uh, the, existing, uh, the existing framework and uh, make sure you can kind of configure uh, bare metal servers as well. So this is an example of what we have uh, submitted from a blueprint perspective. Uh, uh, and the idea is, you know, this extensible framework, but both for uh, virtual machines as well as uh, physical machines. Uh, and then we would, you would, you know, kind of configure the environment based on the request that you get. So let me uh, build this out. Uh, next is networking. Just before I hand it over to Dwayne, any questions on uh, UCS, um, the, the framework we have, the, the management plane that we have, any, any questions? If you have, I'll, I'll be glad to take any. No? Okay. Thank you. Right, I'll save Dwayne, it. over to you. Thank you. So now we've learned how to deploy OpenStack compute and storage with UCS and we'll do a deep dive on deploying OpenStack networking with Cisco Nexus. So Nexus is the de facto data center standard. So number one, data center switching for ethernet, number one market share, fiber channel over ethernet, SAN switching. Over 40,000 customers, over 11 million 10 gigabit ethernet ports shipped. We are leveraging Nexus for OpenStack. Just like UCS, there's a UCS model for whatever application, there's a Nexus for whatever your application needs are also. So we, for OpenStack, we tend to focus on the top of rack switches. So the Nexus 3000, 1RU, Nexus 5000 and 6000, 1 to 2RU. The Nexus 5000, for example, is part of a flex pod or a V block. We also talk about software-defined networking with the Nexus 1000V, so the software version of Nexus. So, Cisco has a quantum or neutron plugins to the Nexus product family. So whatever you need, hardware-based or software-based, we have a solution with Nexus. Beat you. So, um, we've also contributed plugin diagrams in terms of how the Cisco Nexus plugin works and can be designed. Here you see in the middle the top of rack switch, 3,000 or the 5,000 or the 6,000. That's connected to um, an aggregate switch, like the Cisco uh, Nexus 7000, for example. Compute nodes are attached to the uh, top of rack switch. All this information is on DocWiki. We also have one of the authors, Shannon, in the back there, if you have any questions after. So there's many benefits to using the Cisco Nexus plugin for quantum or neutron networking. 
So one is automated VLAN provisioning, right? So who here has kept a spreadsheet of VLANs and managed VLANs that way with the spreadsheet? That's kind of a long way to spend the day at times, isn't it? It should be automated. Just like we're automating VMs, compute, and storage, we need to automate the VLAN management also. Also for scalability, you can use your network switch as a layer three gateway. Rather than using a generic Linux server with IP tables for networking, you can use something designed for high scalability for networking. You map the Nexus SVI switch virtual interface to the tenant, and you can have your Nexus top of rack switch be your layer three gateway. Um, also, high availability, VPC, virtual port channel. You can have multiple connections to multiple Nexus switches for high availability. Um, and also, you get to choose. Do you want the performance assist of a hardware-based solution? Do you want the flexibility of software? Do you want a combination of the two? Right? Whatever your technology and application needs, there's a solution within the Nexus hardware and software-based family. So the Nexus switch is a layer three gateway. So this allows you to turn off the layer three agent so you're removing that network node bottleneck of generic Linux server with IP tables. You can do overlay technologies, you can do GRE or VXLAN, very high scalability for networking with Nexus switch as a layer three gateway. The Nexus 1000V has many advantages also. One advantage is it has vPath service chaining today. So while um, firewall VPN and load balancing as a service standards are being defined, while plugins are being created, you can start using service chaining with the Nexus 1000V. It's also a very nice VXLAN overlay functionality so you can extend the VLAN from the data center um, to areas outside of the data center. The CSR, the Cloud Services Router 1000V. So think of this as the OS for an ASR 9000 in a VM. Now you can spin up as many copies as you want, one per customer for billable services. You can put it on the network node. You can put it on multiple compute nodes. So think about the innovation there. Thousands of engineers for decades, all the networking technology, EIGRP, BGP, Syslog, NetFlow, you now have all of that technology integrated into OpenStack as a VM. Other ways that we're helping to deploy compute storage and networking is with CVDs or Cisco validated designs. Here's a CVD that we did with Red Hat. Some of the components that we've talked about earlier, UCSM, UCS Manager, the Fabric Interconnect, the 6248, so 48 upgradable ports. Fabric Interconnect, the UCS 2000 series. This allows connectivity to the Fabric to Blade servers. UCS C220 M3, excellent for compute intensive. UCS C240, good for both compute and storage intensive resources. Also the VIC, the, um, which is the virtual interface card, which has functionality such as VMFX. In addition to scaling with Red Hat, we have resources to help scaling with Ubuntu also. We have the Cisco OpenStack installer, which as we can see here, pulls down from GitHub, the community edition, makes it very easy to get OpenStack on Cisco UCS with Nexus plugins installed and scaled out throughout your network. We're also innovating with high availability. So this high availability option here listed on DocWiki, is a superset of the high availability as part of the OpenStack reference architecture today. This reference architecture provides active, active for all the major OpenStack components. Um, it uses technology such as Galera Cluster for my SQL, HA Proxy, as well as Keep Alive D. So with this mechanism, we use 13 nodes, all of which are UCS C240 M3s, three controller nodes, three compute nodes, two load balancer nodes, two Swift proxy nodes, and three Swift storage nodes. So a great way to scale your deployment, compute storage and networking is using some of these high availabilities based on lessons learned with other architectures and other customer environments. We're also introducing, I think your hand's in the way, so, okay. <laughs> new, new advanced services. So just like advanced services from other cloud technologies. This is services to help you get up and running with OpenStack, whether it's 
an assessment, is my network right for OpenStack? What are the first applications I should start to deploy on OpenStack? Validation, predefined um, test documents, diagrams, good for pilots to production. Design and deployment, how do you scale out from that initial deployment to multiple deployments? And optimization, right? how do you apply best practices? How do you continue to reduce OpEx? How do you continue to scale out your OpenStack cluster? So we are providing these advanced services, strategy and assessment and validation today uh, with design deployment and optimization later this year. Um, we're also innovating in other areas, um, such as spine and leaf technologies. Who here has been at Cisco Live past year or so? Okay. So it was a great demo for uh, DFA on OpenStack, so spine and leaf technology, great way to reduce latency and have um, increased functionality. So in conclusion, Cisco offers a complete compute, storage, and networking solution for OpenStack. We have large-scale customers' deployment in deployment today in excess of 1,000 nodes. We offer advanced and technical services to help you accelerate from OpenStack pilots to OpenStack productions. We'd love to apply some of these best practices and lessons learned to your customer environments as well, so please let us know how we can help. Please send us an email at openstack-support at cisco.com. Also, more information can be found at cisco.com slash go slash openstack. So Shook and I will be around later to answer any questions. But on behalf of Cisco, the UCS, Nexus, and OpenStack teams, we thank you so much for your interest and support in Cisco and OpenStack. And we hope you have a great remainder of the summit. Thank you.